Ready now, yesterday Dre went off the road, rode a car a few times. Thank you, she's okay. Some glass shards to the arm, a bump on the head. The car did its job, she said. Porter was at home with Katie, so he's fine. And I have no idea where this was. <laughs> Do I need tape? Yeah. Oh, I will, n I will never make fun of you for that. <laughs> well, we're live on Facebook. I don't know why we YouTube are? doesn't pop up anymore. Yep, now we are. Oh. <gasps> I gotta find it. Oh. Negative ride. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually so relieved when you said... Uh, I didn't need a ride. You didn't Levi? ride because I'm like, because I, I had to go talk to them and I'm thinking, okay, well, I'll run out and I'll do this and I'll run back and I'll do this. Yeah, and then we got here at like 6.30 and nobody was here. So my mom was like, just come back. And I was like, okay. Sorry so, about that. That's okay. So I got back home, and then um, I had oh. dinner, and then she was like, yeah, we gotta go. And so I, I had texted you, and then I was like, actually, never mind again. <laughs> I was I'm, like, I'm just so glad you got here. Yeah, I was like, I'm really sorry. I'm, I keep, ch I kept changing it on you a whole bunch. Now, I was, uh, we're not, we're not on, on yet, are we? Uh-huh, we're on. I mean, we're on, but we're not. Um, My mic's on. Have we started everything? No, oh. we haven't. Like, well, I was looking at um, when some of the people were painting this. <laughs> Sorry, my hands are like garlic. Just... <laughs> no, like it just star. like distracts me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. Anyway, some people were saying that there were some confusing lines on the face. I was just wondering if you. There are a, knew. well because there's so many lines. If you knew, I mean, if you, if you. Uh, I'm gonna try and number right? them. Try and. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny's like, can you just like be better at this? No, 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 that wasn't it at all. I was just like, which lines should I worry about? You know, I'm worried about the lines. Honestly, on the lines. probably around the eyes is I think where it gets a little bit confusing. But those are to me, you know, when I'm looking at them, I'm like, those are the shadow lines. So yeah. I don't so well, I was just wondering if you knew what they were talking about. I, I think it's because I, I kind of highlight, or I, I outline where the shadows and where the highlights are, that it can be confusing. So. Okay. Oh, you have a new apron? Yes. Well, wow. my red one I left at home on accident, so I have this one. It's my backup apron. <laughs> I think my mom made this one for me, actually. Or she made it and I just commandeered it. I'm not quite sure. I just think you should make and sell Let's Make Art aprons. We ordered samples. Oh, yay. So we're working on it. That's awesome. I wear one all the time, not because I'm painting, because I'm sewing and I get threads everywhere. Are we using this? No, okay. that's just on the table. Hello, guys. Hello, everybody. Oh, hello. Hello. Laura says she's ready, ready to maintain. Oh. Ooh, maintain. good vibes for this one. Good one, Laura. She's always yeah. good with those puns. Come on, Hannah. Give us one. Give us a pun. <laughs> uh, it's too much pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way. Same. I'm, I'm actually usually, I'm usually pretty, yeah, yeah, that's it. I was, I would be lying if I didn't tell you. <laughs> I'm actually pretty good at puns, but uh, right now I'm a little tired. It's been a long day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheetah puns. Amen. Cheetah puns? Yeah. Like a, like. Like, why don't you play in the jungle? Because there's too many cheetahs. That's a good one. That's a good one. I'll have to do, when I do a cheetah, I'll invite you back. <laughs> And that will be the expectation. I'm always sending my grandchildren these stupid jokes. That was one of them I sent to yeah. him. <laughs> Grandma sent me another one, and she was like, why don't you ever shower with a Pokemon in the bathroom? Because they'll take a peek at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, I'm the queen of dad humor. She'll just, like, she'll just literally, like, randomly send them to me. It'll be, like, out of the blue, just, like, 6 in the morning. I know, I just want to make, them, make you smile. Yeah, and then I laugh about it for, like, four months. <laughs> and then somehow it gets brought back up like a couple years later and I'm still laughing about it. Yeah, I positively like. ready in Virginia, positively spelled P A W. Oh, no, that's a pause. good one. That's a good one. And it is seven sixteen. Oh, it's time to go. Oh, let's go. Let's get let's get going. I am anxious to do this. I just think Wait. this is one of the most beautiful pictures I've ever seen. I'm so glad you said that. Because you don't even have a picture of him. That's what I'm looking for. I had my little reference. Uh -oh. Where's the? Is it it's like a that, little five is by it seven. Your cup or no? Under that paper? Oh. No. Yeah. Is it top of palette search? No. Hold on. Oh, 
hold on, you guys. We gotta find. We gotta find my lion reference. Picture. She ain't lying. I ain't lying. I gotta find it. Wait, is it in here? Nope. Hold on. Hold on. I put it on the desk before we started. Can you check in those drawers actually and just make sure? Where did it go? Try the top one. The top one? No. Wait, wait. Maybe I put it like in my pad. Let me make sure. Sorry, guys. <laughs> that was good. That's good, Jenny. <laughs> Here it is, here it is, found it, it. found it, it. <laughs> found it, you guys, sorry, I had it the whole Ooh, time. A hard time. It's okay. okay, okay, I'm professional, I promise. I'm really good at this, okay. Oh, all right, you guys, welcome to Let's Make Art. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I'm so excited to paint this with you. Tonight we are doing our lion. Ooh, Ooh. Uh, you need to ooh and ah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna <laughs> We're just gonna wow. roar this whole thing. Wow. Yeah, that's good. Wow. So um, tonight I have Hannah painting with me. I have Jenny painting with me. I am Sarah Cray. Keenan is working the cameras. However, he does not have a mic on tonight. So sorry. I'll just he'll just try and talk loudly, or I'll just repeat everything he says. Not yes. everything. <laughs> Hopefully, not everything. Maybe not everything. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> They're like Sometimes stop. I sound dumb. <laughs> okay. Um, so tonight we are using two paintbrushes, a round six and a round two, our, our, our normal go-to guys. We are using four colors. We have tangerine, lemon yellow, fuchsia, and black. Yes, those four, uh, which is basically a yellow, a orange, a pink, and a black. Just those four colors. That's it. Um, we, oh, they said they can hear you. So oh, can it. You're That's because I'm using my diaphragm. <laughs> you I'm are. very loud. <laughs> You're doing a great job. <laughs> Thank you. He's using his outside voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we have six steps for this project. So, our very first step is we are going to do a light wash across the entire face of the lion. Our second step is we're going to put in like our shadows. So that's kind of on the forehead, around the eyes, on the sides of the mouth. The third step, we are going to do our mane. The fourth step, we're going to do the eyes and the nose. Fifth step, we're going to do the black parts. So black areas around the lion. You see, you see where there's black and that's what we're going to do. That makes sense. Okay, great. The details. The, and then the very last step is details. As always, we just take a second, make sure everything's tidied up and then we're done. Okay. We have an outline for this project. So if you have our subscription box or you have this kit, the outline should be included. Um, if not, you can just download on our website for free because we're so nice. It's so convenient. <laughs> it's so helpful. It's the, really helpful. You can pay with us if you're in another country. You can just download and print. You don't have to pay shipping. That's right. Jean Dobre. Keenan with the other language. Good job. Polish. Polish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go over how to transfer this onto your watercolor paper. Then we will take our oath, and then we will start with warm-ups and then get into our painting. Okay? All right. All right. So when you are transferring your uh, outline onto your page i use painter's tape to tape my outline straight to my watercolor paper and then oh wait look um rendy is that rendy is that right she says i love doing this with my granddaughters what joy you've created and i am here with my granddaughter <laughs> hannah is my granddaughter i'm not related to them but i feel like i'm part of their family <laughs> she is. We claim her. We claim her. <laughs> So, I'm pretty sure if she didn't have such a good mother, I'd be in. I have a couple mothers. <laughs> Many mothers. I do. I have a few of them, and they do a great job. I'm very well loved. <laughs> okay. All right, let's get started. So, uh, now there's a couple different ways that you can transfer, transfer images. I use uh, graphite paper, um, but you can use a light box. You can make your own light box using a flashlight and a clear glass dish. You can hold it up against a window and trace it. There's so many options, you guys. You can even make your own graphite paper by just like coloring with a pencil across a whole paper and then use it the same way. So what I'm going the to do- graphite paper is way easier than that. It just is. Trust it me is. That, yeah. This is probably one of the easier ways. So 
after I tape it down, and the reason why I tape it down is because I don't want it to move while I'm tracing my outline or else my lines will get all funky. So and you're gonna take your graphite paper and you're gonna put it shiny side, like this really so dark side down. Mm -hmm. And whatever line you make on the outline, it's gonna transfer onto your paper. But a word of caution, watercolor is transparent. So if you make these lines really dark, you're gonna see it through the watercolor. I'm going to trace mine a little bit darker just so you guys can see better on the camera. Um, but if you're at home doing this, try and do it as light as you can. And it's helpful if you use kind of a felt tip marker because it's just gonna get a lighter line anyway than if you're using a pencil or a pen. So just go ahead and start. And then what I usually like to do is I'll do my first line and then I'll lift it up and check it underneath. And then that way I know if I'm doing it too light or too dark. Can't even see my line. <laughs> oh, you can't see mine either. Let me see if I can see this one. Barely. Do you want to, you can use a pen if that's I too light I'll for use, you. I think I would. I, I like it. See, I like to be able to see the lines. And they bothered I, me a lot when I first started doing this, but now I don't mind them. I know it's the same way for me. Like when I would paint originals, I hated seeing the pencil lines through it. And then the more I painted, the more I realized that nobody actually cares, and it's not a big deal. I feel like it also adds detail to it. And it adds like, I don't know. It's like, yeah, I for real painted this. Look at my pencil lines. This isn't a print, you know? Okay, I'm gonna press a little bit harder so you guys can see. I'm scared to press too hard because I don't wanna like bring them up. Now the main is kind of a free for all, so you don't have to get the lines exactly right on the main right here. One little hint on this, if you do this and a bunch of you use the same outline, um, we were, I was doing this with my granddaughters one day and I started using colored pencils so that you could see, you know, like one, one was red and one was blue and you could see where your, uh, where your line was. Yeah, you know if you uh, skipped a spot or right. something. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what you were saying. I was picking up what you were putting down. If we use a watercolor pencil to trace on a light box, will the light wash take away the watercolor pencil? Yes, Paula, it will. So if you, I like to use watercolor pencils when I'm like roughly sketching things because then that line disappears when I add water to it. The only bummer to that is when we have all these multiple lines going on for shadows and highlights, once you hit water on that, then that line is gone. So um, if you're using a watercolor pencil, you still can, but what I would do, Paula, is I would actually skip that first step where we put that light wash in, and then that way your lines stay there and you can keep painting with us. And it won't, it won't obstruct your painting too bad. You'll know when you need to put in the, um, the light wash when you get to it, but I would skip that first step if that's what you're using. I think at the end when we finish these, we should hold them up like Simba. I think you are so <laughs> smart. That's exactly what we're going to do. And then Keenan's going to have to sing the Lion King that. song. <laughs> yeah. The words for that are Pennsylvania, Paraguay. Oh. I, don't, I don't think that's right. I think it's you not, just made that up. I just don't know what the words are, so I just <laughs> I think that I sounds think good. I think Pennsylvania is a real word, though. So. I'm going to, I am actually going to say Pennsylvania when I hold mine up. <laughs> Pennsylvania. <laughs> Paraguay. Paraguay. <laughs> uh, oh, that sounded weird. <laughs> that's all right. We'll have to, Keenan will join me in that Awima Way song too. We'll have to do that one too. Awima Way. Awima. In the jungle, the mighty Mike. jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. Keenan? You're supposed to go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep, nailing it. Okay, so this is how mine looks, and it doesn't. It's not really. That there. looks great. That's that's what we want when that's, you're doing an outline. That's what we want. That's what we want. Mine are always like five times darker than that. Well, I'm just saying. That's because you use the marker. The yeah. marker makes a lighter line. The, the marker makes a lighter line. So if you're having trouble with when you're using a pen or pencil to trace, and it's just so dark, and you're seeing it through your paintings, and it's making you mad, just take a deep breath. Use a felt tip marker, and it won't be that dark. Okay. Trace 
Okay. I think I got everything. Keenan, will you put this on overhead? And I just want to see what it looks like. I'm there now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be seeing that all night. It's going to be amazing. Okay, I'm going to do that darker then. Mm -hmm. I'm going to draw over mine really quick. Laura, Laura Lacey says, Keenan can carry a tune. He absolutely can. Thank you, Laura. Keenan is a talented musician. Well. Don't pretend like you're not. I've heard you play piano. Oh, my gosh. She can play piano like nobody's business. I know. And he can sing. And he can. <laughs> you're turning red? Yes. Okay, I'm going over my outline with a pencil. At least for the parts on the face so you guys can see a little bit better what I'm doing. When I first started drawing, I used to draw lions, like, religiously. <laughs> Kenan, oh, really? Keenan, you should go on American Idol, they're saying. <laughs> Keenan, I would vote for you. I, I bet you all of Let's Make Art would vote for you. I bet they You would, would win would just on that. <laughs> <laughs> You'd win on puns alone. Yeah, puns alone. Okay, sorry guys, give me just one second. Miss the right side of the nose, she said. You're missing one line. Oh, I just added it. Okay. But I was missing it, and you're right. Thank you for catching that. No, she caught it. They're a little delayed. Yeah, Mar Maria. 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 I just, I met, just a met a girl named Maria. West Side Story. So tonight's gonna be like the whole Broadway night. Isn't it so, Isn't it so <laughs> good? I'm like singing questions. I wouldn't be mad about that. I would not be mad about that. April, April Tong on here said we'd totally vote for you. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, Keenan. I do want to read one from uh, another Mary. Okay. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I think I've heard right. Mary Cimento. Hi <laughs> from New Orleans. I just want to say how wonderful this group is. My, my husband loved all of his cards from all lesbians. Oh, oh, so happy to hear that. Thank you. All right, I think we're ready to do our warm-ups. I'm not going to do. I'm not going to outline the mane because, like, Cause it's you can fine. See it because I can see it. But the face is what matters. Okay, let's get a scratch paper, okay. and we are going to do our warm-ups. So, um, the very first thing I want you to do is grab your paintbrush, and we are going to practice our different values. So value is all about the lightness and darkness of a color. And if you've watched this a lot of times, we always do this warm up, but it's like, if I could just instill with you one bit of information, it's how important values are. Values is what is going to make your painting seem three dimensional. It's so important. So we're going to keep practicing that. Also, I use it in every paint painting pretty much. So sorry. Okay. Oh, our oath. Oh, Teresa. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Whew. Okay, everybody raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> and I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you. That's like in line with the... What is it? That didn't happen. That was <laughs> okay. Oh, also I'm wearing a new apron. Yeah. So look Beautiful. at it for a second. Just look at it for a <laughs> second. Kidding. Okay. So grab your brush, whatever one you feel comfortable using, and get it wet. And then you're going to hit it <laughs> they off. They do not want us to forget that. That's funny. They love that oath. Oh, and I love doing the <laughs> oath because... Amen. <laughs> sometimes we forget that we are comparing ourselves. And sometimes we forget that we're feeling stressed out, especially when we're looking at a blank piece of paper. So I'm just here to remind you that this little piece of paper is not going to get the best of you. This is just about having fun. And it's not about who's better. That's mm -hmm. all it is. So... We might need to retake that oath three times tonight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so after you get your paintbrush wet, I want you to hit it off the side of the cup because if you go straight from water to the paper, that's too much water and it will start to pool on your paper and that's not what we want. So you hit it off the side of the cup a couple of times. And then I want you to pick up a color, any color, and you're going to fill the belly of your brush with the color. And then we're going to paint just like a rectangle or a heart or whatever shape you desire. And then you're going to just like 
dunk it a couple of times, hit it off the side of your cup, and do another rectangle. Sarah, would you want to pull your pad down? And if you pull yeah. your water to the top right of that pad, they can see it a little bit better. Here? Yeah. I'll put it here. Okay. And then dunk it a couple of times, hit it off, and paint again. And just keep on doing that until you have like zero color left on your brush. I think that's probably good for mine. So here we have four different values. So this is our dark value, this is our medium value, and here are our light values here. So if you're not used to watercolor, but you're used to other mediums like acrylic or oil, you are used to this. And so you always paint in this value and you kind of layer it and lay it on thick which is not totally bad, but with watercolor, the beauty of it is just how this color shows up even though it's so light. That's, that's what's wonderful about watercolor is just those really subtle light values. So when you're painting a picture, you wanna make sure that you are using this entire range. And then as we go forward with the painting, as we're doing an area, I'll tell you kind of if it's a dark value or a medium value or a light value, and you can refer back to this. So you know kind of what I'm talking about. And if you want to make it lighter, all you have to do is use more water. That's all it is. We're not using white paint. We just use more water. And that's why I love watercolor. It's just, it just is easy for you. You know that's what I mean? Awesome. Okay. So we are going to do the same exact thing that we just did, except I want us to do it um, all together, like next to each other, so they blend in, because I want to show you a transition of value. So same thing, get your paintbrush wet, hit it off the side of your brush, grab a color. You're gonna start off with your dark value. Rinse almost immediately, go right where you left off, spread that out, rinse, hit it off, Start right where you left off, keep spreading it out, and just keep on going. Could you list the colors one more time? Sure, we are using fuchsia, lemon yellow, tangerine, and black. So black, pink, yellow, and orange. Thank you. You're welcome. And if you wanna go back in there and try and like blend some of this out. So you can see here, I have a dark to a light value transition that is smooth. So I don't have like really hard lines. And when we're doing animals, especially, we have a lot of these areas, like if you're looking at the mouth and also kind of around the nose, you see we start out dark and then it transitions to a lighter value here. So you wanna keep that in mind. Okay. And the next thing I want us to practice is just using our rounds. Um, we have round brushes here. And the thing I love about round brushes is that you can do a thick and thin line in the same brush stroke, just depending on your pressure. They're very versatile, which is why they're my workhorses, right? Because I don't want to have to switch to like a million brushes. So I want us to practice doing a thick and thin line in the same stroke. So when you're using a brush, like a round, when you are pressing down hard on it, I can get a really thick line. And then as I lighten up, I can go to a thin line. So I just wanna have you guys kind of practice that thick to thin. If you wanna add like a wave to it, like maybe something like that. But just kind of practice where it, as you like go towards the end of your brush stroke, you're lifting your brush off, which will make it go into a point. Very nice, very nice. Which as we do the lion's mane, that will be important because we don't wanna do kind of like sun rays. We don't wanna do this, <laughs> right? Which is what our brain is telling us to do. Our brain is telling us that the hair is coming out of the face straight. And so our brain is like, just make these brush strokes, right? But really it's kind of like out of the face coming out and then it like thins out because that's what hair does when it's gathered and greasy and greasy hey i have thin hair i understand the grease struggle oh i have really thin hair too. do you use dry shampoo because it is i do unreal i do it's the best 
I just wanted to tell everybody about it when I first started using it, but every single person I told was like, yeah, I've been using that for a long time. I'm like, how am I always late to these things? It's a struggle I live with too. I'm always late. Okay. Now, the last thing that we are going to practice is just doing really thin lines. And we're, we actually don't do a lot of line work with this lion. However, there are some areas, especially around the eyes, around the nose and the mouth, where we are painting in small spaces. So I just want us to practice that. So take your round two and you can use whatever color you want. But to like get a thin area, you, you're going to want to hold your brush vertically and then that way it's right on the point and then just make, you can make a line um, or if you want to like practice doing circles because we're going to be painting around an eyeball, practice like doing those curved lines with this tiny brush and um, I can't do this. there you go, there you go, yeah. And so sometimes what you can do, even if you're using a smaller brush, if you have a lot of water and paint on your paintbrush, it's gonna make a thicker line. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll pick up paint and then I swoosh my brush back and forth on my palette, which is going to create a point on my brush. There you go. And then you're just painting on that like pressed point. So if even if you're using a small brush and you're still getting a thicker line, swoosh your brush back and forth so it flattens it. And then now you have a nice little thin line to go off of. Now, if you are new to watercolor and you are getting a line like this, that just means you need more water. That's it. So just get your brush wet. And the same thing is true for the round sixes as it is for the round twos, which is when you're filling in a space and you're trying to fill up space fast, use the side of your brush, as in use the full belly of your brush to press down and get a nice thick line like that. And then when you're trying to do smaller spaces or intricate work, hold it up. So you can see, so like when we do our main, I just, I would hate for you guys to feel like you have to do your main like this, like filling it in like, that would just take so long. You know what I mean? Like, don't be afraid to just use that full belly and just really get messy in there. Okay? Okay. All right, I think we're ready to get started. Heather asked if my lion needed some dry shampoo. <laughs> no, that lion already has some volume. That's why, that's why lions live in the desert. Too. Yeah. It's dry. And if Wait, you want... Yeah. They no. live in, in the jungle. They live in both. Well, yeah, some yeah because can. Africa's a desert. I think some parts of Africa are deserty and some parts are jungly. Well, there are also Asian lions. I'm making all of this up. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Notice, Keenan's Keenan's like, I hope you guys know the answer because I right. don't. Keenan's going to try to say Azure. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, that's right. <laughs> okay. So the very first thing we are going to do is going to do a light wash across our lion. The so whole lion. the whole lion except for the mane and the chin. So it's basically just the face. Just the face. So think back to our warm-ups, think back to that light color. So get your paintbrush wet. Grab a little bit. I'm going to do I'm going to do just a little bit of tangerine with water. And that's the color I'm going to use. This color? Oh, Pat says lions don't live in jungles. It's oh. a myth. Oh. From that song. What? Oh, Pat, thanks for telling us. Stephanie asks, on an average, how long do the paint alongs take? Paintings take. Oh, you, these usually last around an hour and a half. Yeah. So. Because of the extra instruction. Right. Okay. So just just start going on your lion. And are we, we fill in all the lines? Yeah, just fill in all the lines, but make sure it's a light, light wash. Is this light enough? Yeah, yeah, add a little bit more water to that. Spread it around. Mm -hmm. Do I go over the eye as well? Not the eyeball. Great. Did I tell you too late? <laughs> no. <laughs> usually, usually you'll do that though, and I'll be painting something. I'll be like, not great. I know. I actually, well, because sometimes I don't realize it until we start painting, and then I'm like, wait, not that part. And then they're like, 
Dang, I already painted it. When I said the whole face. When I said the whole face. She didn't mean the whole face. I didn't mean the whole face. <laughs> Just parts of the face, and you have to guess which ones. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Pretty much she says she's sitting, but that's how it is. I'm trying to be better about that. I feel like I'm doing a very poor job at this. I think you're doing an excellent job, and you need to be kind to yourself. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> My grandma's right. We're going to need to save it a little bunch. I'm just going to, like, write it on your hand. Just stamp it on my forehead? Pretty much. Or my forehead, so you see it whenever you look at me. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm amazing. <laughs> so good. <laughs> okay. So this, you might be like, what is this for? Well, this is serving for like the highlighted parts of our lion. So if you look around the eyes, right underneath the eyes, kind of on the brow, um, and right here and right here, we have these highlighted like light creamy parts. That's what this is that we're putting down right there. So the khaki color. The khaki. All right, that's step one. Kitty khaki. You guys did it. <laughs> Good job. Now we're gonna move on to step two. We're gonna do the shadows or the uh, kind of darker values on our lion. What? This girl said no lions in the jungle. It's a myth and this girl gave a, a thing where you look and you can see the lions in the rainforest. They do live in some jungles. Ooh. Awesome. We have a you guys... I imagine they, uh, lions live everywhere, really. They can live anywhere they want to live. Let's just say that yeah. because they're, they're big. Large, they're the boss. They're the boss. they can eat us, so we let them do that. Large, Whatever they want to do. They can also in live charge. off of just like straight up plants, like tree bark. I mean, they'll get like super malnourished and like they'll die eventually, but they can live off of it for a solid two months or something before so they can find I. food. So can I. High schoolers. <laughs> Marcy says they don't live in caves. They're claustrophobic. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I like you guys so much. <laughs> okay. Okay, focus. Okay. We're going to do the, the darker values. So I'm going to grab some of my tangerine. I'm going to grab a little bit of black because brown is essentially dark orange. If you guys didn't know that, that's all it is. So I can make a brown. I'm also going to put in a little bit of uh, my fuchsia in there to give it a little bit like reddish brown. But you just keep on mixing until you get a brown that you're happy with. I feel pretty good about this one. Oh, too much. You can even throw some yellow in there. It's like, why not? Everybody's invited to this party. Okay. I think Hannah needs a little help. Let me help you. Yeah, please. We got orange. We got some pink. We got some black. Oh, too much black. That's okay. Just more orange then. <laughs> there you go. Ooh, like magic. So... That looks like an emoji. What Which else? one? The poop emoji. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, we have children I'm sorry. watching. <laughs> I'm sorry I said that. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to start with like this line in the middle of my lion's forehead, and then it kind of branches out from there. Yep. So it's pretty dark in between there. And the reason why we're doing this is because if you look at the lion, the bone structure kind of goes out. And then like there's a crevice right here where these two kind of brows meet. So right in between, there's going to be a hard line. We also have a hard line underneath here, underneath the eyes. Like so. And then what I'm going to do is I just rinse my brush a couple of times and underneath the eyes where we just laid these dark marks, I'm going to softly blend out similar to like we did in our warm up, where we do our value change. So right underneath the eyes, it's where it's going to be darkest, not right underneath, just like the outline part. So at the top part, that's where it's darkest. And then it's going to transition into a lighter value. And remember with our outlines, they're just guidelines. Don't feel like you have to stay within that one area so tightly and specifically because we don't want this painting to be blocky. I kind of put outlines usually in the middle of where things end. Um, so then we can, if you transition, if, if you're trying to transition out and it goes farther than the outline, that's okay. 
that's not a big deal at all, so don't stress about it. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just add a little bit of water and softly blend. No, you're doing great. Mm. Thanks. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, and then can I show you something? Yeah. If you're painting and you wanna lift up some colors, so let's say you're trying to transition and it kinda of turns even, what you can do is you can actually lift up color. So using just a damp brush, you can actually take your brush and lift up the color and put it on your paper towel. So you just kinda of like grab it and pull up and wipe it. You are an artist. You just gotta keep practicing, that's all it is. See? There, now you got your transition. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> can we get in any closer over the top cam, you think, Keenan? I think we can. I know it's got a limit, but. We'll try and get closer, Taylor. Okay. I'm also going to have use this really dark, thank you, Keenan. You're welcome. This dark brown on the sides of my mouth. And it's gonna be the same thing. I'm gonna put the dark on the edge first and then just use water to transition out. Now we want right um, by the nose, right underneath the nose to be the lightest color. I'm gonna come back again and fix the focus. Okay. And also, it's at this point where the in, the, my like artist brain, I don't know if that's a thing, is talking to me and just being like, this is too tan and brown. Like, let's mix it up. Let's throw in some yellow. Let's throw in some orange or, or whatever. So I'm going to grab a little bit of orange and kind of like on the cheeks here, I'm going to give it a little bit of color. And you can do yellow. You can do orange, you can even do a little bit of pink. Don't be afraid of those drops of color because look, just by adding those two things, it just gives it a little bit more depth and life than if we were just using like all browns. Even if it's not totally true to how we would see it, this is why it's really fun to paint because if you wanna have bright orange spots all over your lion, you can. Yeah. And it's cool looking, it's yours. So don't be afraid to really play with color because um, it's one of my favorite things to do. It adds character. Okay. So then I'm also going to do, so above the eye, there's like, um, what would you call this? A wavy line that kind of sticks out a little bit. Just like that. And I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow on the mouth too because I just want some, some strong color there. And a little bit of orange. Yeah, look at that, that just warms him right up, I feel. See a cozy lion? He's a dandelion. A dandelion. <laughs> Now there is one thing that I did notice. A lot of you guys have been posting your lines and I've loved seeing them. There's been, there's been rainbow ones and galaxy ones and all these different ones. Some had crowns, some had, so cool. You guys are doing so great. There is one thing that I noticed though is a lot of them tend to go towards really, really dark and heavy, which is fine for some of the areas, but in your painting, you, you wanna make sure that you have that full range of really light values, so like, on the mouth, in some parts of the mane, on some parts of the face, it's like a really light, and then it goes all the way really dark. So just kind of pay attention to the values that you're putting down and make sure you have that range in there because that is what is actually gonna give your lion dimension. If we kind of make it all even, the same value, it automatically flattens everything. That's just a rule in art. Mine's already flat. It's okay. 
you have to, you, I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be nice to yourself. That's the whole point of this. So just, it's just a try. It's your, your, also, we're just trying. We're learning. Also, I would just like to say that this is your fifth painting. <laughs> this is your fifth painting ever. So it's okay. It's okay if you're still learning and getting the hold of things. You shouldn't get this from the very first try because it's a hard thing. Because nobody does. Nobody does. And you're doing great. You just keep mm -hmm. trying. Okay. So I got my dark parts. Now I'm going to start blending out the top part two around my forehead. Now we let that dry there for a while. So if it's not blending out how we want it to, not a big deal. Don't stress. What I do is I just grab a little bit of color then to kind of match it and then blend out. So I'm going to kind of blend on the nose, like across, like across where the eyes are that on either side of the nose. That's going to be where those outlines are. That's going to be blended out there too. Yes, just like that. Yeah. And go all the way. See kind of where that outline is. There you go. You know, one thing, Sarah, that um, I noticed from the beginning till now is you paint super fast, and um, and I used to be afraid to do that because mm -hmm. I was afraid of making a mistake. But when mm -hmm. you just start putting it down and playing with it, that's kind of when the the relaxation and the learning comes. Yes, yes. You don't expect it to be perfect. You just expect it. Uh, you know, you just want to enjoy it. Yeah, and I've noticed too that like. Um, I know it's stressful maybe how fast that I'm going and that's understandable and so I try and keep that in mind and try and slow down but at the same time when you're going so slow that's really when you kind of seize up because you're afraid of the next brush stroke you're going to put down you're afraid of this where like if you just turn off that part of your brain and just kind of like paint then one you're learning how to make decisions quicker and two you're not as mad if it doesn't turn out. <laughs> You know what yeah. I mean? Because some people have spent four hours on a painting and then they're mad at the end. Where like you can spend 45 minutes and be like, oh, you know what? Not too bad. And that was you fun. You can tell it's a lion. Yeah. The, the past week we were in a tulip festival and I was painting more than I've ever painted. Mm -hmm. You know, from zero to 100. <laughs> and uh, that was one of the main things I noticed where if I was taking my time, I would hesitate on decisions where if I had just done it, I would have had cooler effects right. when the yeah. paint was wet and all that. So. Yeah. So you write. You you write. <laughs> <laughs> Kenan was teaching people. He was doing such a good good job. It was so fun. Kenan, you're a great teacher. Okay, so yeah, I mean, actually, if there is anybody out in Utah, you ought to tell them about that because they could go by and do that. It's at Thanksgiving Point. Yeah, it's I was still gonna, happening, right? Yeah, I was going to tell them at the end. Oh, okay, never mind. Jenna. <laughs> Again, Spoilers! Fire, fire. <laughs> There's a cool thing. Okay, I'm putting a little bit more yellow around the top of my line where I just did that brown. Maybe a little bit of orange too, because you know why not? Personality. Yep. Yep. Yes. Looking good. It looks like he's wearing a mask. Like one of those X Men masks. I, it always reminds me of actually a clown whenever I paint a lion, because they have those him. markings that above and below. That I'm like, I feel like I'm putting clown I'm makeup on this. I was going to take your quote. <laughs> I was going to quote you while you were here. I think mine looks like, I think these the faces just painted like this look like orangutans. Mm, I can see that. Okay. Okay, the other part where there's a little bit of shadow is on the nose. We have those two kind of little bumps, mm -hmm. horizontal lines. So you're going to put those across and then softly kind of blend them out. Just a little. What's up, Keenan? Um, there have been four requests to see Keenan. <laughs> Keenan, come on, come on. They want give I'll the people what they want, Keenan. <laughs> Just give the people what they want. I'll zoom in a little <laughs> so I can introduce myself again. Sorry about my hair. I've got I don't have dry hair shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> dry shampoo. What is it? That's what it's called. It's like a powder that you spray in your hair that takes the grease out. I've seen it. But I've never used it. It's you don't need amazing. it, Keenan. You don't need it. There you are. There you are. There he is, Keenan. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> One of these days, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna bring a piano on here and just have you play our intro music, okay? All right. Okay, deal. Oh my gosh, that would be Wouldn't so that be cool. Fun? He could do it. Do you guys have intro music? No. Not well. We need intro music, oh, so no. that's why I'm gonna get Keenan. Okay. Oh, no. 
Okay, I kind of lost my line when I did that. Like yeah. It, yeah, I've lost my line. Yeah, so sometimes when you put your... No, your lines look, her lines look good. Yeah, I would leave those. Those are great. Okay. So sometimes when you put a dark value in and you blend out, you lose that initial color. That's not a huge deal. You can just go right over again while it's wet. Or if it's just blending out because it's so wet, then wait till it dries and just do it over. But there you go. All right. Whoa, Keenan is hot. <laughs> <laughs> and married with two darling little children. <laughs> That's true. Okay, so we got our face and our lion's looking pretty good. And even if you don't think he is looking good. He will look good. He will look good. Animals always look really funny in the middle of painting. Do not give up just yet. Now we are going to do our mane. So. Because you're my mane man. Because you're my main man, is that what he said? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so when you're doing the lion's mane, there's just one thing I really want to point out to you, which is around the face. This is how we're actually defining the shape of the skull. So if we put our, this dark line out here, then that makes the lion's head way bigger. Does that make sense? So we have the line of where we want the head to be. So that's why that dark line is there because we are defining the shape of the head and also that's where the hair is coming out of. So usually it's like gets dark. So if you think of like your own hair coming off your, your head, it's gonna be darker where it's coming out of my scalp and then it gets lighter as it goes out. And that's because it's like attached to my skull and then it flows out. Does that make sense? Yes. So. When you're doing your lion's mane, make sure it's dark around this shape. And then as you go out towards the edge, make sure it's a lighter value. So you see how light I get on the edges here? Mm -hmm. So you wanna make sure you're gonna do that same thing that we did in the warm up, where we're gonna start with dark value and then you're just gonna add water and blend out to the edge to make your edge shape. So, Lena says she can only say he's hot because she's older. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna make some more dark brown. I'm gonna need some more orange. Oh, I thought you were gonna take mine. I was like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you can't take that. I'm willing to share. Okay, so. Did I tell you how much I love the new paint bottles? You guys love the new paint bottles? We've heard good things. If you guys like the new so, paint bottles, let us know. Yeah, so much better. Okay. Maybe grab a little bit of pink in there, maybe a little bit of yellow. You know me, I like to mix all the colors. Okay, so right off, and I'm gonna do this in sections so I can show you guys how to blend it. But I'm gonna start off kind of doing this shape. So you think of our curved thin and thick lines because it's coming out of there. Okay, and then rinse your brush, grab some water and blend out. Now the reason why we're gonna to wanna to do this in chunks is because if we did the entire dark ring and then try and blend out, then um, it will be harder to blend out. I need a darker brown, but I don't yeah. make it darker. Yeah, add black, add some more orange. There you go. More black, maybe more pink, more orange. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Did you know the darker the mane of a male lion is the healthier it is? Are you serious? Mm -hmm. That's then, why um, young lions have like really dark black manes and then when they overtake a pride and they get old, they'll get more blonde. I'm so happy you're here. It's either that or the opposite. <laughs> I can't remember anymore. <laughs> Hannah actually knows a lot about animals. I wouldn't be surprised if Hannah is a veterinarian and she grows up. She loves animals. That's so great. Either that or the opposite. Either that or the complete opposite of what yeah. I just said. I can't really remember anymore. Okay, and then of course, you see as we're blending out, it's this really nice tan color, which, you know, that's all in good, but I like me some drops of color. So while it's still wet, I like to introduce little bits of orange, little bits of yellow, maybe even some pink, because you know what, why not? It's your lion, you can do whatever you want. And you just like, yep. you don't like stroke it out, you just, you just really, side paint it? Yeah, I'm side painting it. I'm letting it get all nice and messy because I know in our heads, this is what it, your brain is telling you to do this. Yeah, it is. You need to ignore your brain. <gasps> ignore that part of your brain. Just turn it off. Just turn it off. Mm -hmm. Use the side brush to really fill it in. And then when you get to the edge, that's when you can do some little kind of strokes poking out. 
But the other thing your brain is gonna want you to do is have all of these strokes be even. Even in width, even in between them, and even in length. Stop it, you're reading my brain. I know. <laughs> and I know because I've been there. Because you have to fight these things as you start to learn because what your brain tells you to do and what your eye is actually seeing are two different things. So let it be a regular, use the side of the brush to fill in the space and when it's nice and wet, drop in hints of color and I just drop them in. I'm not, I'm not stroking them in like this. I'm kind of dropping them in and letting them move together because when there's a lot of hair, it really almost looks like, especially lion's manes, um, it kind of just looks like one piece. So that's what we're kind of playing with here. And whenever I have a large space like this where I can play with color and watercolor textures, I'm going to do it. I mean, don't give me all this delicious space and then expect me to paint it perfectly. You know what I mean? Like, it's watercolor. Have some fun with it. Exactly. So I'm, uh, that's a cool color. I'm ready to kind of come up here to the top. Do I just keep doing, like here I did these kind of whooshy here. Mm -hmm. We're gonna, are we doing? So when you get to the top, you're gonna like think of the shape of the head. So it's gonna come out this way. And then when it gets to this side, it's gonna come out the other way. Like that. So think of how your hair almost parts. Right. He's got a nice Jim Carrey Dumb and Dumber part right there. <laughs> and then blend it out. And then if you have to do a couple of layers, because again, I know that when we put our dark value down first and we blend out, sometimes we lose that original dark value color. So if you got to put another layer down, not a big deal. I do that. I just want more orange. Yeah, that's looking good. Like how I keep whispering so nobody else can hear me. <laughs> You're like, Sarah, is this okay? <laughs> Do I sound yeah. that breathy? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just cannot you whisper. I'm not very good at it. <laughs> I'm going to put actually a little bit of pink in mine. Now, the only thing for yours is I really want you to throw in some color in there. However, it's your painting. So if you don't want to, or if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you don't need to listen to me. Well, what do you mean throw in color? Like, see how I just did like drops of yellow oh. and orange? Yeah, mine's just brown. Yeah, so that's why I like to throw in a little bit of, because I just feel like it gives it interest. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, let's really have fun with this. Well, did you, nice didn't you do one that was like the galaxy lion? Yes. What colors did you use for that? So when I did the galaxy one for that book I illustrated, I just used blue and purple. And I did the entire lion using blue and purple. Oh, that's, oh, that's so, so cool. And it turned out beautiful. I was so happy with it. It's one of my favorite things I've painted, I think. So, and that's the fun thing with animals is you can just use the outline, switch out the colors and you can make it whatever you want. Oh yeah, yep, very nice. I feel like I want to say I'm trying, but at the same time, I know if I say I'm trying, I'm going to screw it up somehow. And I'm gonna <laughs> careful, 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 careful. Oh, you're oh, you're oh, walking oh, on sorry. thin lines. <laughs> I would be kind to myself. What if we did like, we just kicked people off the show if they were to, <laughs> like we give them three Two strikes. Yeah. Three strikes and like big X every time. To like, have a like let's Bye. try another one. <laughs> they get slimed. Did you ever watch that show? Yes. That's dating me a little bit. Okay. Is it? Have you ever watched Ellen's um, game show? I've she watched like things, clips. Like, drops them in spaghetti. And <laughs> I've watched clips of some of them. I mean, that, it's pretty. It, it's pretty entertaining in a morose kind of weird way. <laughs> 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 it's like you're laughing at people's <laughs> people's. Mis <laughs> uh -huh, they fell down that thing forty two times. <laughs> I mean, for some reason, it makes people laugh. So it does. It's it is pretty funny. My fear about my line is actually that it's going to look so symmetrical. You know, everything, mm -hmm. it's like if I have a line here, I have a line there. You know? And there's oh. one other thing that I want to say, which is when you're doing the dark values, your brain is going to tell you to go straight out like this. But what you actually want to do is put a little bit of curve in there. It's going to be more like that. Mm. 
Now you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lori asks if I ever move the paper to get a better angle. Absolutely. I do all the time. I just try and keep it as still for this, for you, for your guys' sake. But when I'm painting at home just on my own, I move the paper all over. One. And if you want to move it to, if it, you have a better time painting this way than this way, we'll switch your paper around, not a big deal. Well, whatever you do, I'm actually doing the opposite because I'm left-handed. Yes. So when you start your colorways, you know, you're going this way, I always go this way. That's what I was noticing earlier when we were doing our warm-ups. You're like, Grandma, you're not following the rules. <laughs> Get off the show. Grandma, there <laughs> are <laughs> rules. Next. Next. <laughs> it's the golden buzzer. Okay, what do I do when I get to the chin? Oh my gosh, that looks so good. That's looking so good. Look at those textures. That looks awesome. <laughs> okay, now when you get to the chin, chin, excuse me, you are going to essentially do the same thing. You're just going to avoid the mouth. So right underneath these mouth hairs, I'll move to that spot so you guys can see. I'm going to like kind of follow the edge using this really dark brown and then just blend out from there the same way that we did. But remember, we're not going straight down. You wanna, you wanna curve it a little bit. So the lines are gonna kinda look, your shape of your lines are gonna look like this. Now, and I probably should have said this earlier too, which is um, when you're putting these initial brush strokes in, um, even though we're gonna blend them out, it's really helpful for you as an artist and for the viewer if you keep in mind like the shape as you're painting them. And then as we get out into the main here, you can use the side of your brush, but you see I'm not putting in my brush strokes horizontally like this and working that way. I'm working right underneath and going out on both sides. And that's because this has form, so it's gonna be rounded because this is a round form that tops, we're painting the around. Tops are dark. Yeah, so right underneath the, so right by the chin, that's where it's darkest. And that's how we're going to communicate that there is space. So whenever you're trying to make something recede, which is we want this bottom part of the mane to recede because it is behind the chin, you make it a darker value because it's farther away from the light. So if our light source is here, this is where our chin is and our mane is back here where our neck is, we need to put a darker value right underneath that chin to communicate that it's farther away. Does that make sense? Just say yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> it's like, nope. Did you repeat that? That made sense to me. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Don't repeat it. <laughs> Kenan's like, I've heard this 50 times. <laughs> I could repeat it in my sleep. <laughs> it was actually pretty fun watching him teach too over the weekend because uh, I just, he was saying, I remember, I feel like you're picking up phrases and you're like teaching, it's so great. <laughs> it's the same way when Brock, Brock does it. Me when I say the vertical hold. He so should not have. I know, he's like, Keenan's over here making up his own phrases. <laughs> well, Brock obviously doesn't pay attention or watch any of these yeah, tutorials. Because <laughs> I say that every single tutorial. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, they're calling for a check-in. A check-in? What's that? That oh. means I look at yours. Nice. In front of everybody. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Ouch. Okay, I'll start with you. Uh. All right, this is Hannah's. I think the texture she's getting on her mane is awesome. With watercolor, when you get these hard lines like that, that might be stressful to you, but let me tell you, do not let that stress you out. That's what makes it interesting and cool. And with lions, you can tell what they are. So we get this really big area to play. I think your hair edges on this are gorgeous. I love how they're mixed up. They're different lengths and different sizes. So I think that's really lovely. Uh, if anything, I might want to see a little bit more color like you have here and here. Yeah, I tried doing that over there and then I just messed up. So if no, you wanna go ahead and I think that looks really good. <laughs> I actually think this texture is really nice. And as it dries, it's gonna look cooler. So I actually wouldn't mess with that because okay. I think that looks really nice. So but maybe underneath here, put a little bit of yellow and orange just so it kind of matches what's going on over here. Yeah. And I kind of want you to blend out this hard line a little bit more okay. if you can. Yeah. But besides that, I think you're looking really, I think you're looking really good. And then 
Another thing words. is maybe when we go <laughs> into the face and we're um, doing like the eyes and the nose, maybe go in and redefine some of these darker areas because they just kind of blended and evened out a little bit. So you can just do another layer right on top, darken like the forehead in between and on this side too, maybe the edge of the mouth. Okay. But I think your mane is looking really great. Thanks. All right, we have Jenny's. I love the colors that you have going on here. You really played with the yellow and the orange, which I totally love. Um, what I would just say is maybe on this, do another little layer of dark around the head here. Okay. And then also the same way on the face, we're like right in between here, it's supposed to be one of our darkest values. Okay. So maybe just do another run here, do another run here, and, and do a little bit darker here. And maybe put in a little bit more um, orange too. Okay. Okay, but it's looking really nice. Now oh, yours, what would you Oh, everybody is saying bless you because you sneezed. Oh, thank you, thank <laughs> you. Everyone's like, bless you, Jenny Doe. Like, there's like five of them, and I'm like, wow, Jenny, they just, they're just blessing you. <laughs> so many blessings. They just see your painting, and they just start blessing oh, you. Bless <laughs> That's, as long as it's not bless your heart. <laughs> I've learned. What that means. That. Wait, why? What does that mean? I th well, what I've heard. <laughs> We're not sure. Is depending on which part of Texas you are from. Or the South. Yeah, yes. It could be almost like an insult. Like kind of like a, uh, what did Michael say? Sarcasm. <sighs> Sarcasm, maybe. Maybe you're a little bit dumb, I think. Yeah. Like, I think the vibe. Bless your heart. Like, a, bless oh, her bless her heart. But really, you're like, uh. She's an idiot. She's an idiot. <laughs> She's an idiot. Is that what you said? <laughs> Sorry. I didn't hear it initially, but then the headphones just threw it in. Aw, honey. April Todd says, aw, honey. <laughs> So even around that mouth, put those that dark in because it's the same thing. The mouth is a little bit sticking out from the mane. So we want to distance ourselves from it and make sure they're not on the same level. So the mouth is going to be lighter, darker around it. I feel like my guy's chin is a little lopsided. That's okay, minus two. <laughs> also, the head is a little bit lopsided, and that's fine. Don't get stressed out about things like that because that's how it is in nature. He's things just, aren't perfectly. Yeah. He's just doing that cute dog face where you're like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the head tilt. Checking out a, a zebra for lunch. For lunch. For lunch. <laughs> And I'm Check really using, edge. and then when you get to the edges of your mane, really play with those thick to thin lines like we did in our warm up. This is where those are coming in handy. My lines may kind of turned a little purple. I think it's that little pink we put in there, and man, I love that. Yeah, I think too. that turned really, I think that turned out really great, which is why I love mixing colors is because you just get these tones of other colors underneath and you're like, I didn't mean to do that, but that's pretty cool. I gotta stop touching my paintbrush because I keep adding stuff and it just <laughs> either gets worse or better and usually gets worse. So Knowing just... when to stop is probably one of the hardest things because oh you just want to keep worst. messing with it. Well, sometimes I'll get ideas in my head and I'm like, oh, that would look really good. And then I'm like, but this looks good still anyway without it. And then I'm like, oh, I can try it. And I try it and I just screw it up real bad. And I'm like, I shouldn't have tried it. I should have just left it. But also sometimes that's how you make really cool things. Yeah. So we got my lane, my mane. <laughs> I'm going to put some little hairs on the edge. So I'm kind of like waving them a little bit. And the reason why we're not doing straight lines is because the hair itself becomes almost like this voluminous thing. If you think of a lion's mane, it's not just thin strands sticking straight out from the head. It's like a mass of hair. And so it itself has a form that you have to curve around when you're doing the hairs off of it. So I always usually do these kind of brush strokes and all and we kind of did them in our warm up, which is it's kind of like if I'm on the right side, 
it's kind of coming off this way. And then if I'm doing it on the left side, it's, it's kind of curving this way. And it's because there is so much hair built up that we got to curve around it. Now I feel like I've added all identical lines to both sides. Okay, so take your paintbrush and blend some of them out and mess them up. Not all of them, but some of them. And take away that sense of, yep, yep, there you go. Oh no, too dry. Or you can do another wash over it. I think it looks good. You're too close to it. When you start criticizing yourself, you just gotta take a step back. Do you know what? That is no truer words have ever been spoken. I can't tell you how many times I've painted something and I thought it was terrible. And then in the morning I get up, the fairies have fixed it, and I'm like, wow, <laughs> that looks pretty good. Yeah, I hate when that happens, because I, when I will be drawing, I sketch a lot. Uh -huh. And so I'll be drawing and I'll look at it and I'm like, this looks like absolute crap. I'm like, it just looks so bad. So I'll rip it, I'll rip it out and I'll crumple it up and I'll throw it away. <laughs> no. And then I'll get up in the morning or like just randomly, like in a couple of weeks, I'll find it again because I'm, I'm a paper hoarder. I never throw my papers away. I don't know why, but I'll find it. <laughs> She's like, I'll it's open a it. Problem. <laughs> it's a personal problem. <laughs> I just keep all my papers. I have papers from fourth grade. Oh, you got to throw those away. Unless they're drawings, then keep those. Yeah. Keep but I have like oh homework gosh. from like fourth grade. Yeah, you gotta throw just. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know why. They're just all in my. My closet. husband was the same way. He had a back. He had his entire backpack from fourth grade, and we were moving. And I'm like, "What is this?" He's like, "My fourth grade backpack with all my papers." I'm like, "Why do you have it?" He's like, "I just thought it'd be a cool time capsule," and I was like, "Okay." <laughs> I'm like, "Why don't you take a look at it now?" And then just throw it in the trash. <laughs> yeah, or take a picture. Take pictures. But really, um, when I was learning to paint and draw, especially when I was like at home and in high school when I was just doing it, what I like to do is I would put my painting up in like on my windowsill in my room and then just leave it there for about a day or two and then just glance at it every time I walked by. And honestly, almost every time I saw it again, I was like, oh, well, look at that. That actually looks pretty darn good. 5% better than it looks <laughs> yesterday. You just keep on doing that enough. The fairies are really liking this week. <laughs> the fairies really did a number. The painting fairies. Okay. So we have our mane. They're looking good. That looks really cool. Yeah, that looks good. I love these hairs that you have going out all wild and crazy. Very nice. Know, this side is a little too wet. It just won't. I can't seem to. Okay. So we are now going to do our eyes and our nose color. But first, before we do that, let's actually take a look at our face because I think all three of us actually need to go in and define our faces a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna do that too because as you can see in the middle of my forehead, that blended out and I lost that dark value. So just take a moment. Um, if you're painting at home and your dark areas stay dark, don't worry about this part. Just get yourself a snack while we put these back in here. So I'm gonna put this kind of dark line back in the middle. And I'm gonna go right underneath the eyes. I feel like my brown's a different color now. Yeah, and that's okay. My, because I mix colors as I go, the different colors change. All I, I think that really just adds to it, but I also know that some personalities can't handle that, and for that I'm really sorry. Um, <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> One thing you can do is just make sure you mix enough color before you start that you can pull as you go from that same color, but I never do. I always just mix on the go. Um, but I think it's helpful to, I don't know, I guess, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's fine. Forgive me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so I did underneath my eyes. I'm gonna do the side of my mouth again. Um, make sure that's a little bit darker and blend it out. And if you're wondering, like, if you lost your outline on your mane and you're not sure how far it should go out, um, my mane is about as wide as my mouth. So if I put my fingers 
across the mouth and I go on either side of my lion's mane, they're all about the same. So. I just did it till it fell off the paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love how your mane turned out. It's wild. It is wild. Do you know that's actually one of the coolest things? It's like all, all, all nature is so different. Every mm -hmm. animal is different and we think they're all beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put a little bit more yellow on my mouth. And on my lion. Now I ended up having this kind of white spot right here, so I'm gonna fix that. I, don't, I think I just kind of avoided that area. Sean says, uh, their lion looks like he got electrocuted. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you gotta be nice you know to yourself. What? And I'm sure that has happened before sometime too, so you're not it's wrong. Had it's had to have. Absolutely. I mean, I don't like to think about it, but I'm just saying, like, it probably happened sometime. <sighs> Cover that white spot back up. It kinda looks like a bulldog, my lion. Look at that hair there. Well, actually, they're very similar. Cats and dogs and lions have um, same facial features, kind yeah, of. Yeah. Yeah. Same structure. Mm -hmm. They have noses. And they have those really deep crinkles. <laughs> they have a mouth. <laughs> There's <Yes>. fur. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of you ears. <laughs> okay. Okay, I redefined some of my dark areas. I'm feeling good about those. Okay, now let's do our nose and our eyes. So, when it comes to our eyeballs, I'm gonna actually use mostly this yellow color. You switched brushes. I'm switching to a two, a round two. Do you wanna turn it this way? Yeah. Can you see that? Do I need to move the palette? So, there's a couple little dots within our eyeballs. So we're not going to paint those. I'm going to paint around them and I'm going to use this yellow. And then at the top of the eyeball, like where it's coming out of the hood, I'm actually going to put in a little drop of brown at the top because even the eyelid itself is casting a shadow on the eyeball. If you look at a person's eye, if you look at, I mean like any, almost any eye, the top part of the eye color is going to be darker than the bottom and that's because our eyelids and eyelashes cast shadows on our eyes. So it just gives it a little bit more Yeah. Yep. I haven't even started. <laughs> Can't even see them. They're so little. So light. I'm wondering how... Sorry, I was just thinking out loud. Okay. Now, my right eyeball got a little bit big because I think I, like, free hand drew that. But that's okay because when we put the black in, you can adjust the size of your actual eyeballs because you'll just put black around it. So, it's not a big deal. Okay, now we are going to do the nose part and this one I'll also do close up too. So essentially on the nose, we're gonna use like a pink color. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of my fuchsia using my round two. I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of my brown just so it neutral, like makes it a little bit more neutral and so it's not like hot pink on my nose. And I'm gonna put the color in like this V. And then I'm gonna use water to spread it out because even the pink part on the nose is going to have a value change. So it's gonna be darker kind of at the bottom where it's going in between the um, cheeks and then on the edge 
And the reason why it's darker on the edge is because it's actually surrounded by black. And that black kind of slowly transitions into the pink, giving it kind of a darker pink right at the beginning. So the dark pink is at the top and at the bottom? So the dark pink is on the edges and at the bottom. On the edges. So like the corner, corner, corner. The three corners are going to have dark pinks. I feel like my lion's nose got a little small. That's okay. I made him a little too. Yeah. Oh, almost dropped that on my paper. All right. So we got our dark pinks. Man, I like this nose. That's a good yeah, nose. Yeah, that's right looking there. good, isn't it? That's a great nose. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when you paint something and you're like, I nailed that. And there's nothing wrong with saying it, you guys. You can be happy with what you're painting. Now we're gonna give um, we're gonna give our eyes and our nose a second to dry. We don't want to put the black in just yet. So I'm actually going to move into the um, mouth. So I'm gonna rinse my two, and I'm gonna grab black. Now, right, I have this kind of little outline section right in between the mouth, right here. I'm gonna put some black in there. That's where that black goes, so kind of right in there. Now, if your pink is still super, super wet, don't touch your blink pink. Don't touch your black to your pink. I like the blink. The blink, don't touch the blink. Like that? Yep, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to softly kind of blend it out because even though this is white fur on the mouth, there's still light and shadow on it, so we gotta put some kind of value on there. So I'm going to, you can take your two or your six, just take a little bit of water. Now, I don't have a lot of, um, I don't have like a pool of black on here. Like, does that make sense? My paint is pretty like close to the surface, so if I just kinda spread it out, it won't go too crazy. But if you have like a, like a puddle of black, pick it up with your paper towel and do it again with a little bit less water. And then you're going to kind of blend this out on the mouth. And how far out do we go? I'm going almost all the way to the edge. The very edge I'm going to leave nice and white, but I'm going to like, yeah, almost all the way out to the edge. I'm just blending. I've got some brown in there. That's okay. Just wait for that to dry and then redefine that line. That, yep. If it's too wet, it might not do what you want. So you kind of just have to wait for it to dry before you can go back in and put that space back in there. Okay. So if your eyes are wet, we can do the black part of our eye. We're on step five, you guys. We're I mean, almost if done. Dry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I say if they're wet? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. If they are dry, we can do the black part. Mine is not dry. So, I'm going to kind of just follow the outline. Here, let's do a close-up again, yeah. Keenan. And actually, what if I prop it up on Don't this? It looks, is that better? It's been looking pretty good. If you don't... I don't need to do that? I don't think so. Okay. That actually brings it farther away. Okay. So, this is... So... We ready? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were you telling me when I was going to be ready. Go. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. So um, I'm just going to follow the little outline I have. The black is going to go above the eye. I can't even see my outline. This is so hard. If you can't see your outline, you kind of just have to eyeball it, which sounds scary, but you guys can do it. Eyeball it. Eyeball, it. <laughs> eyeball the eyeball. And you're gonna like work around. Like that. And then on this lion, right that dot, that bigger dot that's right at the top, that's our pupil. That's our black that we put in there. And make it, it makes it look like it's looking under its brow, you know what I mean? Like, kind of like. Is 
this does not look like an eye. Who remembers? <laughs> he has too much mascara Lambert. on. Lambert, the sheepish lion. Lambert, there's no denying. Who remembers that? I. Not you. I, nope. <laughs> My children would. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna do the same thing on the other eye. Now, I made my eyeball part pretty big, so I can just correct that by painting black over it. And then it's not a big deal. And this is why I kinda like doing the color first and then putting the black over it because then I can adjust sizes. Now, on the right eyeball, we have a big white space on the bottom part of our eye, which I know is confusing. That is glare. That's not your pupil. So, the top circle is still our pupil. The bottom one is a glare that I'm leaving white. So, I must have missed a line then because my, my, uh, I did my, so I want to come up this way then. Yeah. Along the bottom of the eyeball. Yeah. And I kind of have to mm -hmm. get on this side. Definitely messed up on the eye. No, that's fine. So what you can do too, Maybe too big. is if you make your pupils a little bit big, that is not a big deal. Now, two things that you can do to help it is one, you can actually, if you have acrylic paint or gouache or anything, you can just take a white dot and put your glare back in. So you're just kind of like, because that's usually what happens is we combine the two, the pupil and the glare spot into one big pupil. So if you have white paint, you can just go back there, put that glare back in. That will shriek down that pupil a little bit more so it's not so big. And let me look at this the right side up. Okay, I think that's looking good. And remember like eyeballs, if you look at people, if you look at animals, they are, one is sometimes bigger than the other. One is sometimes smaller. I've noticed that sometimes I have an eye that kind of lazes a little bit. It's fine. So like, don't stress because I'm looking at this. This one looks a little bit smaller, but that's okay. Because nothing, they're the same like eyebrows. They're sisters, they're not twins, you know? They can be a little bit different. There we go. Okay, now we are going to do the around the nose. So I'm gonna take my black and kinda, I'm just gonna outline. I'm gonna put a black mark right in that middle and outline my nose. And you outline the top part too. Like that. And then you have to put in the shadows from the nostrils. So on the sides, and I kind of have it outlined, you're gonna put a little bit thicker black line in there. Yep. Just going crazy with your black. Hmm. Oh, Lori said um, um, maybe on the outlines I should color in the dark part on the pupil so people know what is pupil and what is glare. That's a great idea. That is a great idea. Thanks, Laura. Okay. And then I'm actually kind of just using a little bit of a damp brush and blending this black a little bit on the bottom of my nose just to give it that little extra sense of uh, shadow and shading. <laughs> oh. Okay, and now here's the spot. We're on our very last step where you're taking a second, you're looking at it and you're saying, okay, is there anything I can do to help this? 
any other areas, <laughs> not like help this, like save it, but is there anything else I can do or is there a part that's sticking out that's bothering me? For me, these kind of spots around the eyes, they were my first wash, my light wash, and they look almost white now compared to the darkness around it. So I'm actually going to put just a really soft wash on those areas. Now, if yours does not seem out of place on your painting, then don't do this. I feel like mine's way too light up there. See, and I think yours looks like it matches the rest of the line. Yeah, well. yeah, really? yeah, yeah. So here's the thing about values. Can I bring yours to the center? So when it comes to values, you want to make, they kind of inform each other as they go. So your light part, because the other parts of your line are fairly light, this does not seem out of place. If you do want to go in and darken some of these darker values and make it dark, you absolutely can. You just have to make sure that you're bringing up the rest of the painting with it. Does that make sense? So if you want to do that, you're welcome to. Um, and then the other thing that we can do is I kind of have these shapes around the eyes like you see right here on the right hand side yeah. and the left hand side. That's going to be, I filled that in with kind of like a color. So those are going to be a little bit darker too. There we go. And then also that little spot on my nose, I'm gonna just softly blend out over that because that also was looking a little too, um, like still like a white spot. Yeah, that's looking good. Can I see yours? Okay. The nose is really bad. Okay, I'm so in love with your mane though, so that's not a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lift up some of this black on your nose, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to dampen the area and use my paper towel and just lift a little bit of that color so it's not so dark. And then we can reshape your nose. So when you're looking at the shape of the lion's nose, it's kind of like, it's a triangle like this, but then it also kind of curves out this way like this, and this is where those shadows come in. So you have the triangle, but then we also want this part too, which is kind of like the nostrils. So, is it okay if I paint on this? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I already started. I should have asked you before I started. Okay. So cool, Hannah. I just can't get over these textures that you got over here. Okay. And the other thing is we lost a little bit of our mouth shape, which is okay. We can lighten some of that color too. So just like take a damp brush and you can lift it using the brush or using a paper towel. And I'm just going to go in and kind of reshape some of these areas. So I'm going to kind of reshape the cheeks here. How do I stop singing the Lion King song? <laughs> I'm still singing Lambert the Sheepish Lion. What is that Did from? Did anybody even know Lambert the Sheepish Lion? Come on, you guys. Don't, doesn't somebody know that? April Tong said, I do. My maiden name is Lambert. My mom sang it all the time when I was a kid. <laughs> there Aww. we go. It was just a little kid's show. I don't remember. I don't remember. Uh, it was a cartoon or something. Good. Not losing my m whole mind. Just partially. Just some of it. <laughs> uh, she says he looks like a little like he's peeking out of the mist. And I think that's actually really true. Like, I think that... The it's really cool. That I is didn't really think about cool. It first. That's cool. I like that. That is really cool. Make me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, and then in the jungle. The mighty jungle. Someone typed on YouTube uh, in Missouri in kind of Missouri. <laughs> <sleeps> tonight. <laughs> in Missouri, in Hamilton, Missouri. The lion sleeps tonight. There we go. 
Okay, and then I'm just gonna go in with my. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a moment. Sorry. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna go in with my black, and using a two, and just kind of reshape the mouth a little bit. Do you know what's cool about this is that this is really there when we you go. see. Look at his. Um, what are those things called? These his things. chops. The, no, the cheeks. The, it's the the, what, the mouth. The muzzle. The muzzle. The muzzle. <laughs> the muzzle. Yes. His muzzle is so pronounced now. I love that. Okay, and I'm just going to add a little bit of extra. So I'm just kind of reshaping this nose a bit. Give him my line and nose job. <laughs> <laughs> There, there we go. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of extra pink right on that nose, kind of where I lifted up some of that color, just to give it a little bit of life. Yes. There we go. I think that's looking really nice. Thank you. Okay. And now I'm scared to touch it. <laughs> now I'm scared to touch it. <laughs> okay, now also these little uh, lions have little black dots on their uh, what was muzzle. the word? Muzzle. Thank you. I'm like, we just said it. So, so kind of on the right side, I'm going to put in just some of these black dots. Now, if you're brave and you want to put some whiskers in, go for it. I didn't put whiskers in on the example because <gasps> lion whiskers are usually, um, <laughs> lion whiskers are usually white and we don't have white paint. Um, but you can do the same thing with black if you want. White paint would be an investment. Then you could put back your own. I mean, I use um, bleed proof white from Dr. P.H. Martin's, and it is a dream. I love it so much. So I always use it when I lose my glare in my eye, or maybe if I want to reshape an area, I'll put I'll put that um, in there. So it's really helpful. It's something to look into. I feel like I want to add whiskers, but I'm not brave. So I'll do it with you. <laughs> that look was not comforting. So do you mean with or full? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I'm interested. <laughs> I'll put some in. So if you want to put whiskers in, which always practice, it's the same thin line practice that we were doing before where you're going to pick up paint, you're going to swish it back and forth, and going off, you're just going to do some thin black lines going out. And it's okay if some get a little wonky. Whiskers do get wonky. Mm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Go for it. Why not? And you don't have to have a whiskered coming out from each one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's looking good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of Studio C. It's a... That comedian show? Yeah. Yeah. It's really I put, I'm putting in a little bit more black around my mouth. And again, this is, this is our very last step. This is where we take a break from it and look at it and be like, okay, is there anything else I can do for this? I actually think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna connect my, this to my, there we go. That's what I want. I'm gonna connect it. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. I was thinking about today because I know a lot of people ask about eyes. And I'm like, I wonder how people would feel if I did a box that was just eyes and then it's just like, like goggles almost. So you're only seeing across here, but we could do dog eyes, we can do human eyes, we can do different kinds of eyes, maybe different cool. expressions because eyes are kind of a tricky thing and I want to show you guys what to look for depending on what expression you're trying to make or mimic. We could do our eyes and see if we could guess who's the <laughs> so, that would be so cool. this, um, this eye right here where I've got the wide line, is there anything I should do about that or worry about that? What or? I would actually do on this is I, I want you to shape your 
eyeball a little bit more on this because the white part is almost Show acting. Me what you mean. So if you're seeing this, you see how this is a very clear round shape of the yellow. See how it's nice and oh, round? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You left a, a pretty big white chunk there. Should I fill that in? Fill it in and shape your ball of your of your eye on both. Okay. Because if you leave that white space in, it looks like um, the white part of an eye, which lions don't really have. Don't really have. So we fill this in. Yeah, and shape it. Shape it so it's round. Yes. Yes. Sarah, when you play with Oh, it is? So sorry. That had to have been such an irritating noise. I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> Keenan like, just started, started tweaking. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. Oh, oh, I'm he sorry. looks like he's uh, got a lazy eye now. That's okay. Some lions do have lazy eyes. Oh, is that your dad, Keenan? Yeah. <laughs> You're so mean. My little daughter has a lazy eye. It's okay. Luna. Luna. So Somebody lost her corrective glasses. I'm not entirely sure who that was. Keenan, do you know? I don't. Mm, interesting. Well, I, mean, I, I could argue that it was her, right? <laughs> Fall under your care. <laughs> I was on my hands and knees you with were. a flashlight. You were. You were. Uh, I have no idea where it went. Okay, so take a look at those. Okay, so I think the shape of your eye is looking... Asian. <laughs> it's looking much better, but I think because this pupil was a little bit pulled in, it is looking pulled in. So what I would do is, I know that you have bleed proof white mm -hmm. at home. And if I had some right here, actually I do. Can you hand me that? This? That jar. No, behind the cup. Right behind the salt, or in front of the salt. Oh, because oh, then I can add some to mine. You can add a little bit of glare. I'm going to add a glare to mine. I'm going to add a dot up here too. So I just feel like... I've got all my dots in these nice, perfect lines. It's a very well manicured. Oh dots. my gosh, he is a well manicured. There we go. So you just kind of like, if it's looking too cross eyed, you're going to fill in the left hand side. And then when is that? See how that aut automatically yeah. shifted the look? When that is dry, you can move the pupil a little bit more central over here. Mm -hmm. And if you want, you can put. Um, yellow paint over that or just leave it white and it can act as a glare and then I would do the same thing maybe on this side where because now this pupil is so small we want to make this one small too so we kind of have to what is in here oh I think some other paint got dried on top of it so just give that a second to dry and then what actually you're going to want to lower your black line on the top of this a little bit more because you see how that looks eyeball looks like it's opened mm -hmm. more than it is this one lower that black line to about here and that will help take care of that okay so, so then they're kind of looking do i want to add a glare to this eyeball too i was thinking like i'm okay with the way it looks kind of i just want to i add would some just glare. i would add a little bit of glare but i wouldn't change your pupils because i think your pupils look fine yeah. so i'm going to add a little bit of glare here and then over here, just a little. Is there a line named Clarence? Yes. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And actually, I'm going to add a little <laughs> bit of a black line on mine and lower my eyelid on this side. Yes. You said, is there a lion named Clarence? And I was like, yeah, or Grandma was like, yes. And then I thought to myself, I was like, yeah, there's also a hippo named Hannah. And she's sitting right here. <laughs> 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 Just Hannah. Okay. Yeah, I'm being kind. Hippos are scary. Hippos are scary. Dude, they have giant mouths and giant teeth. Hopefully I don't have teeth like that. I think I would cry. <laughs> I would need braces. Uh, Carla asked, what's the name of the white? This is... Um, well, bleed it's not in the white. right. Yeah, it's Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. You can get a big jar of it on our online at letsmakeart.com for like nine bucks or something. Totally oh, worth it. Well, it's going to last you your whole it's life. It's going to last forever. So it's so great. 
And this was a really hard project, so you guys did so awesome. And if it look, if you can look at that and be like, that looks like a lion, and that's the end, you've got, you guys have succeeded. So give yourselves a pat on the back. This has been a really fun project with a lot of steps, and I think you're ready to see them. Yeah, we're gonna hold them up. All right. All right. We have to do it this way. Oh yeah. So if Jenny first. That. Jenny first. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Coming in hot. Paraguay. Paraguay. Zazabenya. Zazabenya. Blah blah. Zari. Blah blah. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, mine. Paraguay. Blah blah. Okay, Anna. <laughs> okay you guys are so amazing for doing this project this has this one is a little bit more difficult so you guys are awesome for trying it and even if you haven't succeeded that's okay there are some projects that are going to be harder for others than for others and that's okay there are some things I struggle with. There are going to be things that you struggle with and they're not going to be the same thing. And that's the wonderful thing about art is we all have our own perspective. So if you painted this, I would love to see it. Um, you can tag us on Instagram, let's go make art or hashtag let's make art. You can share it on Facebook or we have a wonderful watercoloring group that's just for you guys that you can share your art. That's all we want. We want you guys to be able to see how everybody is painting and it's not about comparing. It's not about putting it out there to see who gets the most likes. It's about seeing how other people are handling the same project and what they have done to make it theirs. It's really fun. So that is called um, Let's Make Art Watercolor. So um, share that. Now, um, what we were talking about earlier with Keenan teaching is we have a booth at the Tulip Festival, which is in Lehigh, Utah at Thanksgiving Point. Um, so I was there this last weekend and it was a lot of fun. I got to meet some people. I was posting about it on Instagram short stories. So if you're in the area, stop by. Our booth is open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and we are painting postcards for the Primary Children's Hospital. So if you want to just paint them a little tulip, we thought it'd be fun if we could bring the tulip festival to them. Um, I will not be there this coming weekend, but I will be there the last weekend. So that's May 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. So I welcome you to still stop by the, the booth. Um, but this coming weekend, uh, Brock will be there. So you'll, you'll be able to see Brock if you want to. He'll teach you how to paint a tulip. And then I'll be there the last weekend. And um, just a little reminder, because there are five Tuesdays in this month, tomorrow we are not releasing a new project. Uh, we are painting a postcard for Linda, who's our Make Art Matter for April. That's going to be next Tuesday um, at 7.15. And so then the day after that is when we'll actually release our first um, tutorial for our May box, which is being shipped now. So I think a lot of you received notifications. They're on their way to you. So I think those are all the announcements I need to make. Um, you guys are wonderful. I appreciate all of you. And if you don't know what our Let's Make Art Matter card is, what we do is if you are a subscriber, um, in all of the subscription boxes, we include a little watercolor postcard that is pre-stamped and pre-addressed. It's the coolest thing. It's the best. It's, it's my favorite thing. And basically we just pick an individual or family who has been nominated and we all, everybody that gets a subscription box gets a postcard in there, we paint them a picture and we send it to them. You don't have to paint what we're painting, just if you have not painted anything yet, I'll do a little tutorial next Tuesday of something that you can paint on there. Linda is this person's, um, is our person for Let's Make Art Matter for the month of April. She's wonderful. She recently lost her husband and they've been married for more than 50 years. So we just wanted to send her a little bit of love and a little bit of support. And she's already been receiving postcards this entire month and has been scrapbooking them. Oh. And it's so great. And so um, if you guys participate in that, I just really appreciate you. Um, it's, I just think it's important to take time out of your day to tell someone that you don't even know that you care about them and that's how we can make the world a little bit better place. So I hope you join us for that. You guys are amazing. That's all I got to say. Okay, bye.